case, the next part is second order ordinary differential equation. And as you can see here, a mechanical system, uh, so called mass spring and damper. So you can see here, uh, um, here represent mass and K represents spring, yeah, it, it's a uh, spring stiffness. And C is the coefficient of viscous friction of a damper. Okay? So represent damper. So you think using Newton's second law, you can derive second order differential equation. Yeah, I can uh, review a little bit the way you can derive it. The system first you use a free body diagram, which means you substitute the force element themselves by force. Okay, so spring is substituted by force exerted by the spring, which is k times x, and damper substituted by force exerted by the damper which is C times a dot and uh, here is the input force noted, noted by U so using Newton's second law sum of all okay, sum of external force equal to mh double dot okay. let's choose h is direction of h here <clears throat> um, so i can sub substitute the external force f here by minus kh minus c a dot equal to um, sorry we still have u plus u equal to um, m h double dot so move this to the right hand side this to the right hand side then you get the m h double dot plus c h dot plus k h equal to u okay. um, then uh, I rewrite it like this h double dot plus c over m h dot plus k over um, h plus 1 over um, u okay. then we need to solve this equation okay. uh, by the way we, I can uh, give the initial condition uh, yeah, because this is second order, you need two initial conditions. The first one is, let's say we start H from zero at time zero, and uh, velocity at time zero, we also start from zero. Okay. Yeah, again, here is the linear system. So the solution for this equation is equal to the homogeneous solution plus particular solution. Okay. Um, 
So homogeneous solution is obtained from this equation. I think I should put H here, H here. So again, the idea is the same. Uh, what is the form of H that the derivatives still have the same form? First derivatives still have the same form as original function. Second derivatives still have the same form. So of course, uh, HH must be C e to the lambda t. Then uh, take the derivative h a dot equal to lambda c e to the lambda t and h h double dot equal to c e h double dot h equal to lambda square c e to the lambda t. So you can see that the, the difference between one function to the derivative is just a factor of lambda. That, that's why when you see this, you can actually just go straight to the characteristic equation, which is lambda square because this is kind of a derivative, and plus the coefficient is c over m lambda plus k over m. Okay. Of course, uh, if you you you, you you obtain it from substitution of uh, hh ha dot and h double, uh, h double dot, uh, you obtain this equation. Okay, so here is the characteristic equation, and set it to zero. So next time when you see this kind of equation and you want to write characteristic equation, just write this down and set it to zero. And okay, it's lambda square c over m lambda plus k over m uh, equal to zero. Um, next step, uh, I want to transform it to a standard form. Okay, using standard form. Standard form. Yeah, standard form looks like this. And I will explain why we call this standard form. Which means um, Or uh, zeta equal to
like this, right? Yes. I want to make this one clearer. C over square root of um, K. And uh, you know what the zeta is called? It is called damping ratio. Okay. Zeta. Zeta is called damping ratio. Why is called damping ratio? Because you can see here. Uh, C here is coefficient from a damper, right? Coefficient of the damper. And arm is mass, K is spring constant, spring stiffness. And you can see this uh, fraction, this ratio. And that's why zeta is called damping ratio. And uh, OBN is called natural frequency. Okay. So this is where the name comes from. Yeah, yeah, I will explain later why ohm gain is called natural frequency. But now let's uh, answer the question why the state that form is chosen to be like this. Okay. So this is a second, uh, second de degree equation. Okay, second degree equation. To find the solution, you find Delta. Okay. Now find the solution. Find the solution of. Let's call this a star. So first you look at delta. It has this standard. Uh, the standard has this form because the delta will have a special form that can be easily analyzed or can e be easily remembered why you look at it so it is equal to zeta omega and all square and minus a times c a here c here not not a c here. so the coefficient of the degree two here so it is omega and square then you can have omega and square here and then you have zeta square minus one here it has interesting uh, form why it say why i say it's interesting because the sign of delta is just the same of the sign of zeta square minus one see oh, by the way yeah, by the way, zeta is positive, omega is positive. So here the sign, the sign of delta is the same as, as that of zeta square minus one. So it's easy to. Uh, Compare the, the zeta with the number one. I mean, I mean, if zeta is greater than one, then delta is positive. Then we got real number uh, of lambda, right, of the solution. If delta is negative, then we get complex number of the solution lambda. And if delta is zero, meaning that the zeta equal to one, then you have Double, double roots of lambda. 
Oh, I think it is be it's better to call Ruth, right? Ruth. So we have three cases. Case one delta yeah, delta is positive. Delta positive, then lambda one and lambda two are real, real number. Okay. And lambda one and two equal to theta omega n plus minus square root of delta, which means omega n square root of theta square minus one. Okay. Case number two. Delta equal to zero, then I I should say here as well zeta greater than one, and here means zeta equal to one. Then lambda one equal to lambda two equal to uh, because this part is zero then it zeta omega n yeah case number three delta r is negative or Zeta less than one. Then lambda one and lambda two are complex number. Okay. So lambda one, lambda lambda one two equal like this, uh, minus zeta omega n plus minus j omega n and square root of one minus zeta square. Okay. Okay, now we have uh, three cases uh, that uh, lambda can be either real number or complex number. Then let's look at the solution of the homogeneous uh, solution. Okay. Now let's see the solution of H H double dot plus uh, two zeta omega and H A dot plus omega n square H equal to zero. Okay, case one delta R positive. So H H of T equal to uh, now lambda two. It originally we say it equal to c e to the lambda t but now we have two lambda so how we can construct the solution with two lambda okay. what can we do with two choice two choices of lambda uh, you look at here you look at this equation let's say if i i decompose this idea if I decompose decompose H H of T 
equal to HH1 of T plus HH2 of T then uh, I can have yeah then H double dot H1 plus 2 zeta omega n h a dot plus omega n square h h h one h one h one and plus um h h two plus two zeta omega n h h two dot plus omega n square h h2 equal to 0 so let's say h h1 is uh, the one that I choose lambda 1 and h h2 I choose for the lambda 2 this means that I can construct the solution as just the sum of the two choice that's the idea so originally we just think that the uh, H H of N has this shape, has this form. But now we have two choices for the lambda. So how we con con construct a solution? So actually I can construct as just uh, C1 e to the lambda 1 t plus C2 e to the lambda 2 t. Which means this one represents H H1 this one represents HH2. Okay. That's the idea. Um, okay, now you got the uh, solution in the first case. That are positive. Now let's see the second case. Delta equal to zero. And you have uh, lambda equal to lambda, lambda one equal to lambda two, which is zeta omega n again you have two lambda but they are the same so how you can construct a solution okay. how can you construct a h h h a of t equal to c e to the lambda t so how you can construct it you, you put lambda one here and plus Put lambda to it, but they are the same, which means you have constant plus constant is still constant. So it means it's like you only choose one option, right? It looks like you only have one option, your choice. So, um, what can you do with this idea again? Idea is to like this. You assume that assume that uh, H of t okay first you can have this solution lambda same lambda lambda one or lambda two okay lambda equal to lambda one equal to lambda two and then you uh, c one c two you just say okay there might be another f of t a function of time and time uh, this same exponential okay. and then you try to find f of t by take the time derivative of this substitute back to the original equation and look for f of t okay. just follow that process then you will find f of t actually is just t okay. so I don't need to show uh, you can make your exercise at home okay. Um, so finally, H A of T equal to C1 E to the lambda T plus C2 T E to the lambda T. Or sometimes you can see it has this form. You can take this one as a factor. So you have C1 plus C2 times T. Right.
Now the last case, which is the most complicated case and the most uh, uh, useful case as well in some control design uh, you will see in the future. So the third case, uh, delta is negative. Again, I, I remind you, uh, zeta is less than one, and lambda one and two equal two minus zeta omega n plus minus j omega n square root of one minus zeta square. So let's call this sigma sigma. Um, plus minus j and call this all of this omega d omega d means omega with damping effects not natural frequency like omega omega n with natural frequency but omega d is uh, you can say damping the or damp frequency something like that that's why you denote it by D here. And again, you can construct a solution uh, HH, HA of T equal to, um, you say C1 is to the lambda 1, T plus C2 e to the lambda 2, T. But now you have lambda 1, lambda 2 as a complex number. So, why do you think this solution is complex number? I mean, finally, this solution is complex number. Originally, you have a mechanical mass spring in emperor, motion, everything is real number. Right. But then, why the solution is complex number? Uh, anyone has some knowledge that we can have a way that make this solution as a real number actually. Do you have some idea? Lan? Do you have some idea? So what do you have some idea? Huh? Yeah, they, you know, the, the complex part, you can use the cos trigonometrics, but uh, the complex numbers still appear, right? You mean, all right, now I, I, I decompose this. I can say C1 is to the um, I can say, oh yeah, sorry, like this. I can say, I can take uh, e to the sigma t as a factor like this, and still have c1 e to the j omega d, and plus c2 e to the minus j omega d oh, times t. Time, time t like this, all right? Yeah. So you say you you, you use you can use a um, uh, oil of identity, right? This one become cosine omega d t plus j sine omega d t but you have c1 here and this one you have c2 e to the minus j omega d t uh, oil and t sorry uh, cosine omega d t plus j sine Omega d t like this. Still complex number. 
and if you say sorry here should be minus and you, you may say well if c1 equal to c2 then the complex term can sell out you may say that but then it means the solution is always cosine so it, is it the complete solution if it's always just cosine why sine cannot be the solution why the sine function cannot be the solution so it's not complete it's just to choose c1 equal to c2 actually there is a way if you choose c1 as a complex conjugate of c2 then the whole thing will return to the real number that is the, the key ingredient here um, so actually to have h a of t as real number c1 and c2 must be complex conjugate Okay, I, I want to prove a little uh, more yeah, to, to, to see that finally you get real number. So H A of T, here you have E to the sigma T, or maybe I ignore this part, I just call, I just call, uh, I just want to uh, consider this part, call it Y of T. Okay, let's see Y of T equal to C1 e to the j omega dt plus C2 e to the minus j omega dt. Uh, but C2 is complex conjugate of C1, which means I, I can write down C1 star representing complex conjugate. Yeah, I can say here. C2 equal to C1 star. Okay. And I can write C1 because it's complex number. I can write it as a e to the uh, e to the a uh, because it's complex number. I can write it down as look um, complex number. Let's say okay C1 C2. Okay, you have real, you have imaginary, okay, you have A, you have B, J, this is for C1 and C2, complex conjugate mean you have same A but you have minus B, J, right? And then uh, you look at the argument here, say theta 1, theta 2, C1 actually is just some amplitude time e to the j theta, right? Am I correct? And C2 here, the angle theta here, this one is just plus, this one is just minus, okay, theta 1 same. So T, C, C2 or C, I can say C1, C1 star, it's just R e to the minus J theta, okay. So now I can substitute the R, R times e to the minus, C, sorry, to the J theta, e to the j omega dt plus r e to the minus j theta and here e to the minus j omega dt so you have r here and then you have e to the j omega dt plus Theta plus, 
plus e to the minus j omega d t plus theta right so here it's just like what we what we thought earlier that if the coefficient here and equal to a coefficient here you can sell out the complex term you only have the real term right so here it means finally you only have two times r cosine um, cosine omega dt plus theta and again you may you may ask the same question why the solution on this cosine why not sine actually sine is in there why if you decompose this 2r cosine d, d t cos a plus b cos a cos b minus sine a sine b right so here you got yeah i don't need don't need to put here uh, cosine theta and then minus sine omega dt sine theta so finally you got real number it just c happen you see one c2 happen to be complex country so actually uh, i just want uh, to go slowly and here because this is very fundamental and you will see it all the time when we need to analyze the behavior of system stability uh, the transient behavior yeah you will see more and more again and again um all right we have three tie or uh, three cases and uh, for the homogeneous solution yes so uh, let me write the final solution of HH. So HH actually, uh, when you have complex roots of the characteristic equation, you can write uh, like this. You can just say that the solution would be just constant to avoid confusion, I use A, constant A cosine uh, omega of, I have exponential term here, exponential, I have exponential term sigma t like this, e to the sigma t, and then amplitude A cosine omega dt plus theta or you can write um, e to the sigma t uh, you, you use this form yeah okay you use this one but theta uh, theta is constant so it becomes just number time constant you just get another constant so you can write down like this you can use a1 cosine omega dt and plus a2 sine omega dt okay so it's your choice whether you want to choose use this form or you want to use this form and both have two constant right this constant one this constant two and this form also have constant one, constant two. Okay. So these two constant can be determined using the initial condition, just like the, the first order differential equation. You determine the constant C from the initial condition, right? You saw it uh, before. So any questions so far?
Now, good. Um, let's uh, observe the behavior. Uh, I mean, the solution in the form of the curve in one place. Oh, uh, before sorry, before that we need to consider particular solution. Okay. Um, okay, particular solution. Um, yeah, again, a particular solution. I, HP, particular solution. HP double dot plus two Z tau omega n. HP dot plus omega n square. HP equal to U. U over M. U over M. Okay, in our case. Um, so to avoid many things complex, I just choose U as constant. Okay? Choose a constant U. Okay? Constant U. Choose constant U. Then then HP must be constant right HP must be constant okay um, so HP equal to what? Well, uh, to uh, make an, a better standardized, uh, I transform it a little bit more. HP dot, HP double dot, plus two zeta omega n, HP dot, plus omega n square HP equal to Omega n square, yeah. Uh, what constant here should I choose? Maybe b because we haven't seen b yet. So b omega n times u here. Oh, uh, let me let me put the b times u here. Okay. So why I I want to I want omega n square p as here because uh, I want xp the solution xp uh, uh, is constant when u is constant xp is just the same as this right v u xp is just same as v u right yeah just go omega n here can say omega n here because HP is constant, the derivative is zero. The second derivative is zero. So HP equal to B. Okay. Um, and let's choose B U to be one. Easy to draw. Let's choose. B is time u is one, so the, the the whole solution in the for the three case, the three case maybe I can rewrite again. Yeah, rewrite here. Uh, that are positive. Uh, H, H, um, yeah, H of t equal to homogeneous, which is c one e to the lambda one t plus c two e to the lambda two t. And then plus the particular solution, HP just one. And then delta equal to zero. Yeah. Zeta greater than one. Zeta equal to one. And H of T equal to E to the lambda T. C1 plus C2T, right? 
and the particular solution one. And the third case, delta equal delta is negative. Yeah. Age of t, the whole solution is um, e. I can use a in front. A e to the sigma t and cosine omega d t plus some constant theta n plus what? And for sure, sigma is negative, right? The sigma equal to minus zeta omega n, which is negative. So the solution uh, for the three k can be summarized by a curve. Now three curves to be exact T here um, initial condition hmm um, well um Okay, I just uh, say the idea of how you can determine C1, C2, or in the last case, A and theta is to use the initial condition. Okay. Initial condition H at time 0 equal to 0 and H dot at time 0 equal to 0. But I'm now not going to show because this is just a simple uh, calculus. Okay. Yeah, just simple calculus. So um, maybe just arithmetic. Eh? Um, I I will just summarize the solution in a, in three curve like this. So because lambda one, lambda two in the first case are all negative lambda 1 negative, lambda 2 negative then this term and this term will die out when time go to infinity okay oops, so oh, not there, just here when time go to infinity, infinity everything just, all the solutions just asymptotically go to this value of particular solution uh, the first case on the exponential, there's no oscillation. Only the last case, you have a cosine term, then you can have oscillation. And, and I can assure you that uh, uh, C1, C2 are negative, or at least one of them is negative. Uh, at least one of them is negative, and especially the one that uh, that does not die out immediate as uh, the one that die out late has higher magnitude of the coefficient. What I'm trying to say here is that at the initial time, everything start from zero here, but uh, it go out like go on like this. Like the first, and then the exponential term die out. The solution just go just asymptotically approach to one of these. Okay. So um, uh, let me choose. Uh, all right, this one is for this case, which means zeta greater than 1. Okay. Then let me choose the black one. The black one is 
in, initially it has the same the same shape like that and then yeah like this maybe um, So why why I know that uh, this this uh, uh, this point it has this shape? I mean, if you look at the derivative, the first derivative is zero because from this condition, the first time derivative at time zero equal to zero, it means uh, this this part this point is minimum um, because. Uh, Extreme point, right? Minimum point. So the the slope is zero. The slope is zero. That's why it must look like this uh, at the initial time. Okay. And this black one is zeta equal to one. So if the black one is here. Um, the last the last case that are negative and the solution has cosine cosine oscillation and always less than one right and I can assure you that when you use the initial condition to find a a is negative okay. a is negative which means um, This term, this term die faster if cosines much smaller than one. You know what I mean? If you compare this term without cosine, without cosine, it means it uh, this term die slow, die out slower, at slower rate. You got that? But if you have the cosine term, cosine is less than one. It makes this term even smaller. It will die out faster. So if this term is die out faster, at the transient part, it go up to one faster, faster than other type of solution. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, what color? Can I have green color? Seems no. So. In the last case, the solution looks like this. Yeah, here must be the same. And then you have overshoot. Like that. Yeah. So in this case, zeta less than 1. You can see that the, at the transient, the, 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 the early part of the transient it go faster but then it, it go too fast such that it have overshoot okay this part is called overshoot now these three cases of the solution has specific name and you need to remember uh, the red one it's called over dam over dam but you can easily remember because dam mean you have damper which light coefficient so light coefficient it contribute to damping ratio greater than one okay so if Damping ratio is light, it's over that. And the black one is called critically damp. Critically. Critically damp. Okay. Critically damp means uh, the damping, damping ratio is zero. Uh, so it's one exactly at one third. Yeah. Uh, 
it means it's the boundary boundary between over dam and the other case you will see under dam or if you look at the diatom it's the boundary of the side of the diatom right that that is zero if you look at the, the tie of a uh, root of the gravity equation it's boundary of real number and complex number that's why it's called critical dam and the last case the blue one it's called yeah this case called under dam it means damping ratio is small so under that um if you look look back at the uh, at the system here what does this in the solution imply um Let's say if you pull out, you pull out the M, and uh, look, yeah, you, you pull out by a certain force, such that B times U equal to one. You pull it out. Yeah, you pull. Uh, you can imagine just let it pull out by gravity. Okay, if you. Yeah, let's say if uh, okay, I redraw this. I want to express the external force that act on it. So So let, let's say our spring has the initial length is here at zero, and then we attach a mass m, and let uh, the gravity pull it by uh, gravity g. And when you attach it and you release it, uh, the mass up here must go down. But you imagine if you have a damper that a very steep, a very um, that the damping coefficient is very large, it means it doesn't want um to move fast. Okay, so it means mass uh, m must go down slowly, 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 and when it reaches the equilibrium point, it stays there. It's like that. And in the case of damping ratio equal to one, it happened very similar. If you look at visually, you imagine it. That you stand in front of it and see it. Okay. So in the case of zeta greater than or equal to one, when you release the mass m, it just go down slowly, slowly, and reach at the equilibrium point. Okay. But if you have very uh, small damping coefficient c. It means like you imagine that it's very close to the spring only. Yeah, you can imagine that. Uh, but somehow you have something that uh, can dissipate energy. So you imagine when you put the mass on there and you release it, it must go fast, right? It go fast uh, that it uh, pass the equilibrium point. I mean at one at the value one here. Yes, this direction is h. And then the spring pull it back, okay, like here. See, the spring pull back. Okay, so the spring pull back may pass through the equilibrium a little bit again, but then the spring push, okay, spring push a little bit, and finally it stay at the equilibrium point. Okay. And. If you imagine that uh, there's no damper, you have only spring attached at the middle, and look back at uh, the equation, you will see that you don't have this term. 
you only have only have this term and this term, right? And and if you look at the characteristic equation, you will get a pure complex number of the roots. The root is pure complex number. Uh, I, I can say that. imaginary number, a pure imaginary number. Then um, the solution is only pure trigonometric. Okay, pure trigonometric. You, you don't have this term. Sigma is zero, right? Yeah. There's no this term. Um, so in that case, there's no damper. You have the solutions like this. And this this one is called undam. Undam. Admin damping uh, effect. So if you take out damper, you have only spring, and you put that, and you assume that the spring is ideal, then you can see it oxidate like that all the time, okay? forever. Uh, and that means zeta equal to zero. Okay, so now it's the end of this part. Uh, you have any question?